Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, I'm going to hand over to Mark Williams, who will introduce himself and the team. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for coming along to this virtual coffee morning. And uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you along. So first of all, um, I'm going to pass you straight over to our principal of the International Stream, uh, Mr. Ian Clayton. Thanks, Mark. Good morning, everybody. Um, great to, to have you here on this uh, Valentine's Day. Uh, remember, if you haven't uh, bought chocolates or flowers or whatever, then quick reminder, you st there's still time. Um, thank you very much for joining us. It's, uh, it's great to have you here, although <clears throat> we'd much rather have you here in person, of course. Um, it's uh, obviously due to the situation that we're, able, that, that we're doing it like this, but thanks for joining us. And uh, it's great that you're, that you're here. Um, a quick, very quick introduction um, about me. As Mark said, my name's Ian Clayton. I've been the head of the International Stream now for eight years and also deputy head of the whole school. Uh, so I've been, been in FIS quite a long time. I've been in Hong Kong for 13 years now. Before I was here, I was at uh, ESF, where I was a vice principal at West Island. And before that, I was nine years in the Philippines as um, founding head of the secondary school at British School Manila. So I've know this, this region pretty well and know the educational landscape within Hong Kong um, really, really well. We're very proud of, uh, of what we do at FIS and uh, certainly given the circumstances of the last two years, um, we've done extremely well. We're opening five new classes in our primary school and one and a half new classes in secondary, uh, of which obviously you're very interested in, in the year seven. So we'll, we'll obviously talk in great uh, detail about that. Um, a couple of things, if you wish to ask any questions, then please put them in the chat box and we'll come to them at the end. I'm sure as we go through the presentation, a lot of your questions, hopefully a lot of your questions will be answered, but if they're not, and you wish to ask a question, please put it in the chat box and we will come back to it at the end and we'll allocate it to the right person who's able, uh, hopefully able to answer any of the questions. And please, please bear in mind, no question is too trivial or no question is unnecessary. If it's something that you really need to know the answer to, then, then please ask. Okay, um, a little bit of background about FIS. I'll introduce you to uh, my colleagues and uh, then uh, others will take you through it in a bit more detail. So if we just go back one, Mark, sorry about that. Um, we are, um, as uh, said there, uh, all through School of the Year last year, uh, as awarded by the Hong Kong um, Living Awards, a magazine in Hong Kong. We're very proud of that. All through school means all the way now from nursery, which is age around three, right through to our year 13, aged around 18. So we see students through from their very youngest um, developmental stages, all the way through to pre-university. As you pro probably know uh, quite a lot about us, we are on four campuses. Uh, we have three island campuses and one off the island uh, in Chung Kwano. And we are a multicultural, I think around 40 nationalities and bilingual English, French, particularly being our specificity. Thanks, Mark. Okay, um, the international uh, stream secondary department, as it says there, uh, top flight dual stream international school with a proud record founded in 1964. Uh, so we've, we're just approaching very soon our, our 60th birthday. And I, I know for a lot of parents that is very, very important. We have longevity, we have history in Hong Kong, um, and we've grown over the years from a tiny school. Where a lot of these international schools started very, very small. We're now a school of around 2,700, maybe just slightly more than that, 2,700 students across our four campuses, of which are now over 1,000 are in the international stream. And next year, probably around 1,100 or so will be across the whole of the international stream from nursery to year 13. We do pride ourselves on a couple of things. And I think for you, um, one of the most important things that we pride ourselves on is being caring, making sure that your uh, children um, are looked after when they're at school, they're in a safe environment. And once that safe environment is established, then they can go on and start to learn. And one of the key things that, that really mark us out, um, and I see it all the time and I hear it all the time from both 
uh, or from parents, from teachers and from the students themselves, is they are, they are happy. They're really, really happy to be at school. Um, they thank teachers for lessons, actually. So uh, that's, quite, that's quite unusual. They really, really love being at the school. They're happy. They enjoy it. And uh, hopefully, obviously, if you join us, you'll find that as your, as your children move with us through the school. Okay, a few uh, words by way of introduction, and I'm gonna hand you over to Mark. You can see um, four key players there, uh, starting on my left, uh, Helen Marshall, who's the deputy head of the school, but is in charge of years seven to nine. And she's a key player in terms of uh, who you might interact with, uh, should you join us uh, next year. Helen has uh, been at the school a couple of years now, and uh, she's very keen and works very hard making sure that the Year 7s are um, integrated into the school in, in a successful manner. Mark there is Head of Secondary. You've already met him. Mark will take over from me in a moment or two. Um, he's been here for seven years, I think, now, and uh, Mark has overseen the growth of the secondary school and um, been, been a successful head for us. There's me, you know me already, and Sylvia will be joining us hopefully a little later. She's currently teaching her class calculus, so it's pretty important that she's there with them. Uh, she'll join us probably around 9.15, and Sylvia is assistant head of years seven to nine. So thank you very much for joining us this morning. That's my bit over with, but I am staying on the call and will be helping to moderate your questions. But at this point, I'm going to hand over to Mark Williams. So thank you, welcome, and hopefully... We'll see you all soon. So hello again, everybody. Um, as Ian said, my name is Mark Williams. Just a little bit about me. I've been in Hong Kong for seven years now. I joined Ian um, seven years ago to, uh, to look at shaping up the school. And uh, we've had a lot of success since that, thus the growth in the school uh, and the interest uh, in year seven this year as well. So um, I'm British. I've done uh, three or four different international schools around the circuit in Shanghai, Dubai and Kuala Lumpur, where I was on senior leadership teams in all three of those schools. Um, but always, always wanted to come to Hong Kong. Uh, my wife had a two, three year stint here when she was young. Um, and we have three children, um, all three of them. Um, one of them is a graduated now from university in the UK and two of them are currently at, uh, in the UK at university and they graduated here from FIS. So I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of, of the school itself. So why joined FIS? As you can see, we've uh, summarized for you some of the, the key aspects of why we feel that FIS is such a good school and a really good uh, school for you to choose for your children to come to. So first of all, what, what is our approach? Well, as Ian mentioned, and you'll hear a lot about uh, a lot of similar things from both myself and Helen and Sylvia as well, is we feel that we have a very inclusive and caring school where we try to nurture um, your children in what we would call a, a more holistic approach. We're looking at building them as, chill, as uh, people um, rather than just as students. Um, we're also very, very keen, as you will hear, on making sure that they become independent in their learning and that they don't just rely on tutors, for example, um, but they're able to take their own learning and take responsibility for that. Whilst doing that, of course, we still maintain, as most Hong Kong schools do, very high academic standards, but we're always keen for them to be innovative and giving them opportunities for them to be creative and to do things for themselves in a safe environment. As Ian also mentioned, uh, we have a very multicultural, um, bilingual uh, learning environment here at the school with the emphasis on English and French. And that also comes, therefore, with a very diverse student body. So Ian talked about over 40 nationalities, and that goes through the whole of the school um, and also through the staff as well. The staff are from mainly from Anglophone countries, um, but for the languages, for the French, the Spanish, the, the Mandarin, um, we do have native speakers. And what you'll find is a real emphasis that, uh, that both Ian and myself really push is collaboration. We feel that uh, good organisations, good schools, do build by people working with each other. So that's not just through the students, but that's also, also through the staff as well. And what are our academics like? Well, our academics, you can see them on the website. They sort of do speak for themselves, but just a few things about that. 
Um, first of all, we have got a long tradition, 60 years of being a school in Hong Kong. We know the landscape pretty well. Um, and our academic performance has always been at the top level. Uh, we were the first school, as you'll see a bit, little bit later, to introduce the IB. Um, and both at IB and IGCSE levels, we have a strong record of um, academic outcomes. Uh, indeed, even at IGCSE, we regularly have top performers in Hong Kong and also top in the world as well. And then finally, beyond school, because at, at this stage, coming into year seven, you have got an eye on the future, definitely the next five or six years, uh, looking at where your children want to go. And one of the great things about us is that we do have a very uh, strong and diverse uh, university guidance team who work from the age of about 14 with you and with your children uh, to really see where it, is it that they want to go and what sort of courses do they want to do. And so very much looking at guiding you through the choices of subjects from the IGCSEs through the IB, so that ultimately um, your child and yourselves are happy that they've got to the, uh, onto the course and to the university that they've chosen to go to. So what is our learning journey? Now, one of the things that really marks us out and where we've moved towards over the last six or seven years is having a fully true international curriculum. So for us, our learning journey, uh, as Ian said, um, we are a two to 18 all through school and we take a lot of pride in that. In fact, around about 25% of our students will stay with us from reception all the way through to year 13. And we start at the age of two with our um, IEYC, the International Early Years Curriculum. And that follows in years two to six um, for, the, uh, for the school with the IPC, the International Primary Curriculum. And both of those are run very, very well, have recently been accredited to very high standards. We then um, will follow them through into the years seven to nine with the International Middle Years Curriculum. And Ms. Marshall will be on in a couple of minutes and we'll talk you through the IMYC and why it is such a good uh, curriculum for your children. And then, as I've already mentioned, in years 10 and 11, we go into the IGCSE, and I'll mention a little bit and go through those in a little while in a bit more depth, as well as the IB programme um, in years 12 and 13, the pre-university course. And then finally, as I mentioned, um, university counselling to make sure that you are, a, uh, you are able to, uh, to aim for your child to go to the university of their choice. So just to narrow that down to secondary, really, there are three main strands going through from year seven all the way through to year 13. So the IMYC, the International Middle Years Curriculum, and then all Cambridge IGCSE, followed by the IB Diploma in years 12 and 13. So now what we'll do is we'll go into a little bit more depth about those different curricula. So I'll just call on uh, Miss Ellen Marshall who'll tell you probably a little bit about herself first of all, and then run you through the International Middle Years curriculum. Helen. Yes, thank you, Mark. Uh, good morning, everyone. Lovely to see you and thanks for joining us. Um, this is my third year at FIS and previous to that, without giving my age away, um, it's been almost 20 years that I've been working internationally. Uh, I've worked in Abu Dhabi, Moscow, Manila, and then now Hong Kong. So it's great uh, to continue with the international scene and especially with the exciting IMYC, which I'm about to tell you about. Um, it's a reasonably new curriculum. It's fun, it's exciting. Our students really enjoy it. Um, it's based on neuroscience and it's aimed specifically at year seven to nine. So if we could go to the next slide. Thank you. Um, so it's based on big ideas whereby, um, for example, in year seven, we would have adaptability and all subjects will cover adaptability in some way, shape or form, bringing the big ideas so that students are um, learning for themselves, but they're bringing these ideas together to get the bigger picture. Um, for example, we study four units in each year group. So year seven and year eight. This year is our second year of um, IMYC curriculum, but next year we'll have year seven, eight and nine. So it'll be all the way through, taking um, students from IEYC all the way through to the end of year nine before they start IGCSE. 
Um, the lessons are taught separately, uh, as in subjects. So overall, we have creative studies, which is uh, history and geography. Uh, languages are taught separately and students in year seven choose either Spanish or Mandarin and will study French. French, we have different levels, so nobody needs to be um, a fluent speaker when they join us at FIS. We have beginners, we have some students who've been studying for a year or two, some uh, who have lived in France and so they have a really good level. And then we also have native speakers. So it's not um, a prerequisite that you need to be fluent in French to come to FIS. Um, we have also um, art, IT are taught together as um, creative studies. We have drama, we have music, English, maths. Science is taught as one subject in year seven and eight, but when students move into year nine and before they choose their um, IGCSE options, they will study physics, chemistry and biology separately. Um, we have diversity in our classes. Um, all Everyone will be studying the big idea. And at the beginning of each unit, we have an entry point where students are introduced to the concepts that they'll be studying. Um, it's normally, it can take place over a day or it can be a couple of lessons, um, but the year group get together and it's exciting. We've tried to make it as fun as possible for them. Um, and at the end of each unit, they have, um, an exit point where the students come together and they either work individually or they can work in teams and they show what they've managed to learn in that unit. So it's a, it's a really exciting, it's really fun. The teachers love teaching it. Uh, the students enjoy learning about it. And straight from their, their comments, if we move to the next slide, I'll give you just a minute or two to have a look at what the students in year seven have said about IMYC. Okay, so fun and exciting. Those are the words that they use most often. Okay, thanks Helen for that. So once they're finished in year seven to nine, um, they do then move on when it comes to year 10. So I moved on one too many. Uh, year 10 and 11, they, they suddenly after they come back in year nine get a little bit serious about their academics, not that they haven't been before, but Certainly, um, the IGCSE has become very much a focal point of them aiming towards uh, the next stage of their academic sort of career, as it were. So we run um, Cambridge International Examination subjects only. And uh, what we do is we have a mix of compulsory subjects uh, with then um, the flexibility uh, to choose others for options. And this is the point where the university councillors come in and start to guide. Um, but also the students have to do, do have to make some choices as they start to narrow down, but not too much because we keep a very broad approach to our curriculum. And that is something that also goes into the IB as well. So you can see from the slide here on the left hand side, the compulsory subjects are English language and English literature. Um, all of our students take English literature, um, and that means also the students that join us from local schools as well. They will um, have uh, good quality teaching, which allows them to access that. We very, very rarely have students who will not take the English literature IGCSE. Uh, mathematics, we offer at two levels. First of all, all of the students will do international mathematics, um, which gives them a really good basis to move on to the IB at whatever level. Um, but also our um, more passionate um, mathematicians uh, enables, enables, are enable, sorry, um, to go on to higher level studies by taking additional mathematics. And the additional mathematics is something that students can try out for uh, and take as well as the international maths. And then all students, as Ms. Marshall said, continue to um, study French. And for the first language French, unfortunately, Cambridge took away the first language uh, certification a couple of years ago. So Actually, we um, aim for something called the DELF, which is a European-wide uh, accredited certification. Um, but most of our students will also then take the foreign language IGCSE with Cambridge. So they're the compulsory subjects, the ones that have to be done. And then what we do is we work with our students to look at what they like to study 
and what they feel will be the ones that they might want to do at IB and have a bearing on their university entrance. So they're then allowed to take five more subjects. Um, they have to take at least one science from biology, chemistry or physics, at least one humanity from economics, history or geography. Um, and then they can also continue to do either Mandarin or Spanish, whichever one they've been studying through years seven to nine. But there are also a real emphasis on, on creativity as well, as I said earlier. So we have art and design, we have computer science, drama and music, which have been introduced recently and are proven to be very popular as well. So around, around about um, a third or just over 40% of our students will take the three sciences. There's a real emphasis on students enjoying their sciences here, uh, mainly because in year seven to nine, it's the first time they come across doing experiments and it's something they really, really enjoy. So they are popular. Uh, other popular subjects include uh, economics and Mandarin, but also there's an increasing popularity with things like computer science and with drama and with music too. One of the reasons that we still keep it broad is that they can also aim for what is called the Cambridge ICE Award. So if students do have a creative subject within the subjects that they do and they get, a gra they get graded at C uh, level or more, then they will qualify for the Cambridge IGC, ICE Award, sorry. But also what we do is we also have a course that goes alongside all of the IGCSEs, which is called the Super Curriculum. But it's at this point that we really encourage our students to become a lot more independent and passionate and start researching and studying things that they really enjoy, and not necessarily through the curriculum. So we offer what's called a Super Curriculum, which is an hour a week, whereby they get taught the, um, the skills of research and writing up papers. And then what they do is they showcase that towards the end of the year, by the end of year 10, uh, where they can show everybody what they've been doing. It's their first chance really for them to do some sort of personalized project. And it's a really good gateway into understanding the skills that are needed to do the extended essay at IB level as well. So we're really, really keen on our students developing those sort of soft skills and research skills uh, during the IGCSE years. So that's a, a pretty thorough uh, examination of IGCSE and now on to um, the IB. So as I said earlier, we were the first school in Hong Kong to offer the IB diploma in 1988 and we've got a very good track record of that since. Uh, we've got uh, some teachers who have been teaching here actually um, since around 1994. So they've been <laughs> teaching for most of the IB years. Um, so we've got, a, a, again, a staff body, a mix of a staff body who are um, who have got longevity, have been uh, at FIS for quite a while, with a mix of new teachers coming in as well. And what we're really proud of, though, over those years since 1988, is that for the vast majority of our students, it has allowed them to get to good universities around the world. We don't just really focus on one area uh, of the world, um, it's around the world, and also to get into the, the, uh, the courses that they are aiming to get into as well. So a little bit more detail about the IB Diploma and the range of subjects that are on offer as well. So we've, we've started to increase the number of students who have stayed with us uh, for the IB Diploma. Uh, we did used to have quite a number going off to um, UK, US, Canada, um, to board, but they've recently started to choose to stay with us a lot more. Um, and so we've now got 41 students uh, currently graduating this year in year 13 and 47 coming through. And even with those sort of small, smallish intimate numbers compared with a lot of other Hong Kong international schools, uh, you can see that we've got a really wide range of subjects on offer as well. So first of all, in Group 1, you have to do six subjects at IB. Uh, in Group 1, um, English and French as native speaking languages are on offer. You'll see for the English, we have uh, not just the literature, but the language and literature as well, which is a popular option. Our languages offer in Group 2, which is languages uh, acquisition, um, are French, and Chinese and Spanish. And we also have Abinishio from beginner um, level um, for French at the moment. 
Uh, within that group one and two, some of the plans that we've got to, when we grow the numbers in the IB programme is also to look at introducing Chinese A, which is Chinese native speaker, um, because we realise this may be something that is very much in demand. And then in group three, which is individuals and societies, you can see that we've got four subjects on offer there, economics, geography, history and psychology. Psychology has just been introduced the last couple of years, and I think you'll find that amongst Hong Kong schools, we're one of the few that actually offer it as a face-to-face -face option uh, rather than it being online. So it is very popular. We will have two classes of that next year, um, and the students really enjoy uh, that subject. In the sciences, uh, you can see that we've got a, a range of sciences on offer. Um, the traditional ones, biology, chemistry, and physics. So those students aiming to be medics can go for the biology and chemistry. And those that are going for engineering, the physics is there for them. Um, but also we have a couple of other subjects that are proving to be very popular and, um, and pupils that stay with us and are coming into us from other schools and from outside of Hong Kong are choosing to do. The first one is something called ESS, which is Environmental Systems in Society, which is a bit of a hybrid between geography and biology, but tackles a lot of the, today's issues like climate change, etc. Um, and the other one is computer science. Computer science has a real emphasis on programming. And again, for those, a fairly small number at the moment, but up to about nine or 10 students, um, a num the vast majority of those then do go on to university to study um, computer science with maths quite often. So that is proven to be a very popular course as well. And again, one that um, I don't think is offered in many other Hong Kong schools. Then mathematics, uh, students have to take maths at IB. And there's, um, there's two courses available, both at higher level and standard level. And then finally, you will see that there is also a good range of creative arts on offer too. So visual arts is very popular with the students who, uh, who love arts, possibly want to go into architecture or even go to study art at university. Uh, the theatre arts, we will hopefully get off the ground next year. So this is a drama course. And again, is, uh, is a really good option. And also what you can do is then take another um, language or another humanities from group three or another science from group four. So as you can see, for a relatively small IB uh, number of students, we do have a really big range of programme and a range of subjects for the students to take. So just a little bit about um, how successful we are. We do take a, a lot of pride in the fact that we have a regularly uh, good, consistent examination performance over the last 10 to 11 years, uh, A star and A levels, uh, sorry, uh, A star and A grades at IGCSE have been around the 70% mark. Um, you can see on the right hand side, uh, we regularly, probably each year actually, uh, get uh, invited to the IGCSE Cambridge Outstanding Learner Awards. So here were three students from a couple of years ago. Uh, who were offered, uh, who gained in different subjects. Uh, for the three subjects there, PE, uh, French and Spanish. And then similarly for IB, again, um, consistently good results, which have got better over the years. So over, the, over 11 years, our average is 36. Over the last five years, our average has been 37. And for the last three years, our average has been 38 points. Um, per, uh, per pupil. Now that doesn't say everything because each individual pupil is different, um, but we have also for five of the last six years had at least one student who has got the full 45 points, which is very, very difficult to get. So at the top there, you can see uh, Layla and Chloe. Chloe uh, stayed in Hong Kong, although she got lots of offers from uh, the UK to study medicine, and she's currently at CHUK, uh, sorry, CUHK. Um, and then to her, uh, to her left and our right is Layla. So Layla again with her sister, actually her twin sister, both got 45 points, and Layla is currently studying at Harvard. And then um, below that, this one from last year, that's Arthur. Arthur, a uh, local Hong Kong boy, has been with us since reception, um, really hardworking boy. He again got 45 points, very successful. And uh, unlike Chloe, he did choose to go to the UK 
so he's currently studying medicine in the UK. And just really to reiterate and to sort of uh, emphasize that we are a school that is looking to get students worldwide for their university choices. Um, traditionally, the UK has been a very, very popular choice, and you can see that over the last 10 to 11 years, that has been um, where half of our students have gone to. But that number has, over the years, has generally tended to go down. Um, we're getting more and more students now applying and being successful in getting to Canada and the US. You can see the numbers there were healthy. Um, but also Australia. We do get some that do stay here in Hong Kong, and increasingly there are more and more of those. But the other growth area that our university team are really getting a very good grip on is, um, is Europe. And so um, it is a very, very cost effective um, area to go to, particularly since the UK um, decided to leave the European uh, Union. And so a number of our students are starting to go to places like Italy um, and to um, the Netherlands in, in particular. And you can see there that although um, there are some of the headline uh, universities that our students get accepted to and then um, take the offer of, um, that does not really tell the whole story. Each of our students are very successful in getting their first choice of university that they want to go to. And these are just a handful of those um, universities that our students do eventually end up at. So at this point, I think it could be Helen or it could be Sylvia. I'm not quite sure. I think Helen, you're smiling. I think it's probably you who's going to come and talk to this slide. No, oh, it's actually Miss Sly. It's actually me. Hi. <laughs> Hello, I'm Miss Sly. Sorry for joining late. I was uh, with my year 11s and we were doing calculus. So I didn't want them to miss out our first lesson on calculus. Uh, anyways, my name is Miss Lai or Sylvia Lai. Um, I am the head of year seven and also the assistant to uh, Miss Marshall, uh, which is the assistant deputy and she's a deputy of year sevens to nine. I'm just gonna quickly go over how we transition from going, moving from primary into, I guess, middle years and secondary school at Blue Pool Road. And uh, we tend to do these um, transition activities to guide the trend, to guide the students uh, into secondary um, as well as possible so that it is smooth, so that any questions that they had prior or even the parents that might have had prior um, will all be answered. OK, uh, so over here in the bubbles are some of the things that we've done, but I'll also quickly explain. Um, we, we tend to do them term by term, which we in this case with our year sixes, we have already started. And that is sending out letters. So um, Ms. Marshall will usually draft a letter in term one, term two and term three. Uh, and we tend to have some meetings, um, parent nights uh, at each term to answer any specific questions that parents might have as it comes up. Uh, also with any questions that the students might have. Um, as the students transition, they also have a buddy system that we tend to pair them up with a, uh, another cur well, a current year seven, uh, so that should they have any questions, they can ask on what we have on Google Classroom. Um, next is uh, we also have Sorry. Uh, next is we also have language options. So uh, the students actually choose what languages they want to do. So French is a must, uh, but the other languages that we have are Mandarin, we have Spanish, and uh, I think those are the two that, that we have so far. Um, they also have um, all these other activities um, that eventually they will join into in year seven. So we have quite a bit of what we call ECAs, uh, so extracurriculars, um, and some of them to kind of go over math club, uh, United Nations, uh, World Scholars Cup, Battle of the Books, ISTA. Um, and they also have roles that they can choose uh, should they want, such as student voice councils, student ambassadors, um, and also specialist teachers in, in each class by the time they are in year seven all the way up until year 13. Um, in addition to that, we also have something special called pastoral care, where each student 
um, well, each class actually is uh, designated with two tutors and the tutors tend to split it up half and half. So one tutor, one specific teacher will be responsible for the health, mental health well-being uh, with approximately 10 to 13 students. And these, um, and, and again, this gives the students an intimate setting where they will have an adult to go to should they have any questions. So the tutor will be with them all the way from year seven, all the way to year 13. So they, they will know them extremely well. Uh, they are in touch with their other te specialist teachers. Um, where, you know, should there be any questions that the student may have or the parents may have, they could always direct it with the, the form tutor um, to help them out with skills like organizational skills, or again, any questions that they specifically might have uh, in terms of the student's well-being. Our school also, in addition to having a, um, a pastoral teacher, they also have what we also have a qualified uh, school counselor. Students are allowed to make a, an appointment on their own time. We have an appointment system where they can meet with the counselor should they need to discuss anything in private or should they um, you know, need another uh, adult uh, guidance. Um, aside from that, um, we also run, I mean, even in our primary sections, they, we have something called a house system and it's kind of very similar to Harry Potter <laughs> where they all have their different, um, you know, their, their different houses. Uh, so in, in our case, we have four houses. Uh, we have the snakes, we have the pandas, we have uh, I'm trying to think, the dragons, and then we have the phoenix. And once they hit go into year seven, or if they were in um, uh, if they were previously in our in our primary section, they get moved on to the same houses in year seven, and it kind of becomes a huge competition where students can gain house points specifically in their uh, special with their special. Sub subject specialist teachers, or there will tend to be some, you know, huge group things. I mean, in this case right now, not right now in a in a face to face setting, but definitely either in an online setting or a face to face setting where they can earn some house points. So in the past, we've done math competitions at schools. Um, where we'll actually currently uh, any students participating in any math competitions that are pointed out, such as the water, Waterloo math contest. We have coming up the Dragon Maths math contest um, with um, other schools. And those students get to earn house points specifically in our school uh, to kind of, you know, gauge, um, engage them and get them motivated to, you know, be part of our community. Uh, yeah, and that, that's about it. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Sylvia. Oh, yeah, no problem. And just, just to follow on from what Sylvia is saying, obviously within the secondary section, there are quite a few clubs that are put on by teachers, um, not just around the academics, um, but there's also uh, something called the Duke of Edinburgh Award, the Young People's Award, which is run uh, with the, mainly with the year 10 and above, actually. Um, but for the younger students, they like getting involved in things like the World Scholars Cup as well, which is a team de uh, debating event. Uh, it's very popular and gets them engaged. But also what we do is within our curriculum, we do on a Wednesday finish at half past one. And there is a full range of extracurricular activities that you can see from this slide uh, take place in the school. So these are offered um, for not just the students in the international street, but also from the French side as well. So these take place across the four campuses and are very, very popular. So as you would expect from a large school, there are plenty of opportunities, as I was saying right at the beginning, really for your children to develop themselves, not just as students, um, but also as people, and to try out different things. Uh, failure is okay, trying things, it doesn't quite work. Uh, finding out that you don't particularly like it is a good thing in life so that you can move on to something that you want to. So, lots of uh, opportunity for your children to get involved in various different things. Now, there were some questions that were put in um, by uh, some parents. So thank you very much for doing that when you signed up. And it's allowed us to just um, shape the next three or four slides. And so I think Ms. Marshall is going to answer the, uh, these questions here. So Ms. Marshall, I'll hand over to you. 
Okay, thank you. So um, the main curriculum, uh, as we've spoken about, is the International Middle Years Curriculum. So um, if you do have any questions, please just get in touch. I hope that um, from presenting to you earlier that that answered a lot of your queries about that. Um, class assignments for each subject, well, that um, depends on the subject. Class assignments, uh, they can be project-based, especially with IMYC. Uh, can be very traditional as well with the maths department. Miss Lai, I'm sure you'll back me up on that. So there's um, summative and there's formative assessment throughout. Uh, homework is put onto Google Classroom. We use that. Uh, and we ask our students to use Google Keep so that they have all the information there. It gives them their diary as well. We use Google. And so all of their deadlines come up. It helps them to organize themselves. Um, and we found that the students really like it as well. Um, students per class, we have 26 um, per form group, but when it comes to some lessons, like I said earlier, when it comes to languages, um, the students will be in much smaller class uh, groups. Okay. Okay, now uh, another really, really good question actually uh, was what is the experience of local students joining FIS? And actually Miss Marshall is going to come back in a minute or two with a current student um, who she got a uh, had a little chat with to see what they, they could uh, do to answer this question. But I just wanted to talk about these two guys here. So uh, on the left here is Yvonne and on the right is Hugo. Um, Yvonne joined us, I think it was in year 10. Hugo joined us, I think year eight or year nine, both from local schools. And um, they both did exceedingly well. And what they really enjoyed was they, they were both very quiet when they first came into the school. Um, and what we found was that they were taking their times not just to get to know the teachers and the learning environment, um, but also their classmates as well. But um, they thrived. They really, really thrived. And you could see that confidence coming through after the first term that they were here with us. So Yvonne, we're particularly proud of because um, it's very difficult sometimes for girls to get into STEM subjects at universities, in particular the top universities. Um, but uh, Yvonne uh, managed to get 45 points at IB, um, but not just that, what she did really, really well was she applied to Cambridge and she got into Cambridge because not all 45 point students get into Cambridge. Cambridge is a difficult and Oxford are uh, quite difficult places to get into and really rely on the interview process as well, which our university team do help with a lot. Uh, and Yvonne uh, is now, I think she's in her third year um, so next year will be her master's and then she'll graduate, but I'm sure she'll have a fantastic career in engineering. And then Hugo, Hugo only uh, left us last year and Hugo had a range of choices. He got 44 points, but Hugo really, really grew. And you could see after, again, a tentative start, getting to know the school, what was really, really good about Hugo was his curiosity. He was just asking questions all of the time, which was wonderful. Uh, not just of his classmates, but also of the teachers as well. So um, Hugo got a range of offers from various places. Why he didn't go to St Andrews to do astrophysics, I really don't know. But he chose instead to go to the Ecole Polytechnique in Paris, which is very, very sought after. And what's remarkable about that is with Hugo, he only picked up his French when he joined the school. Um, now, the course that he's doing at the Ecole Polytechnique is in English, but he is going to be living, he is obviously living in France and, of course, um, making sure that his French is getting better by doing that as well. So there's an example of two students who have joined us from local schools uh, and have gone on to, to Excel. Miss Marshall, I know you've uh, talked to uh, some of our other students, haven't you? Yes, I have. Um, one thing just to mention is that when our, we have students joining us from local schools, we really like to integrate everybody and the classes are diverse in the fact that we have uh, FIS students who've been with us since they started school. Uh, we have students who've joined us in their learning journey in year five, year six. But then we also integrate the classes are a mixture of um, male, female. Uh, we can try to keep that balanced, but also we have um, a real the diverse nationalities in each class. So just because um, students join and with year seven, we're going to have the three classes. We're really going to be mixing those up so that it's a true um, diverse class system that we have coming into year seven. 
Um, so I did speak to um, a year nine girl who joined us in January from a local school. And I explained that we were going to be talking to you this morning. And I said, you know, is there anything that you feel that would be useful for, for parents of new students to know? And this is her words. Um, she said, the best thing about FIS is being part of a community of students who are very open and will do their best to help you in any way. The educational methods allow more space and time for students to relax, and this gives us more motivation to learn better. Um, it's fun learning in FIS, and I hope you will enjoy it too. So I thought I'd just pass that on to you this morning. Thank you. Okay, excellent. All right, I think Ms. Marshall, you're going to um, stay with this one as well. So another couple of questions that were posed by um, some parents. Okay, sorry. So. Um, how do we uh, help students adapt to the uh, different learning environment of an international school? Um, we have the buddy system, which um, we have trained buddies in each year group. So when students join, um, our students who are in year six at the moment will already be used to the international curriculum. So they can help, they'll be one-on-one, -on -one. they're there to answer any questions, to help our students when they come in. It, it can be quite different and, you know, it's getting used to secondary school as well. So there's having to move classroom, having to have a different teacher, having to organise yourself perhaps in a way that's very different to what students have been used to. So that buddy is there. Also as staff, we're very much aware um, that this is a new thing for a lot of students. And so we do as, as best as we can. Um, we really support, we make sure that everybody understands exactly what they need to do, what is expected. Um, and we find that Students settle with us very, very quickly. Um, we offer support for our new students when they come in. We give them a couple of weeks. Uh, then Sylvia and I will be in touch with parents just to check in. How's everything going? We check in with the students. We have the school counsellor has sessions with new students after they've been with us for a month where as a group, um, a couple of, of year sevens will go along and she'll just ask questions, how's things going? And if any issues arise, then we, we deal with it there and then. So we'd like to think that we're as supportive as possible. We want our students, as Mark said, to be happy. Uh, that's the main thing. And so anything we can do to help them with that and with their learning, uh, we do as much as possible. Um, as for uh, this SEN, uh, support available we don't have um, an SEN department so what we encourage um, parents to do and this works with uh, many of our current student body is that if um, parents have an educational um, psychology report then we act upon that um, my colleague Pauline Hall who's in deputy head for years uh, 10 to 13 we come up with an educational plan based from the report for teachers to follow and we support students as best as we can in that way and sometimes that will lead to extra time in examinations uh, which is crucial when they come to IGCSE and then to IB later on. Okay, okay. Thanks. thanks Helen, thanks Sylvia. Okay so and the next question really was about the interview process because yes we are one of the schools that do do an interview uh, for our new students so I'm just going to talk you briefly through that and then pass you on to Sue Ellen who will tell you a little bit more um, about the admissions process and the key stages. So um, there's a three-way thing really that happens with the, um, with the interviews. Um, and they're, they're actually happening now. We've been doing some of them before Christmas and uh, are now in the throes of doing that with a range of students all the way through from year seven to 10 and for uh, students to come into our IB programme next year. So you can see on the left there, there, there's four of our students from three or four years ago, and the two Charlottes, and Debus Meter and Guillaume, uh, who were very, all very successful at the, at the IB programme. Um, so what we do is there are three things that we're looking for for the admissions process. The first one is um, two years worth of school reports, um, which can give us an idea of the academics of, of your children, how they perform in, in subjects. Um, but that doesn't really tell us enough of a story, to be honest with you, because uh, grades, grades without a story don't really mean too much. Um, so secondly, what we do is we ask that you put down a referee from the school. That could be somebody who's in the senior management, but it could also be a teacher um, that knows your child well. Um, but third, uh, what we then do is a 20 to 30 minute interview process, which currently is online. 
um, given the context of Hong Kong at the moment, uh, with myself, and then for year seven, it will be with Miss Marshall when she's available as well, because she also has quite a teaching commitment. But in that, uh, we try not to make it too stressful, although we do realise that children do become stressed about it a bit. So um, what we're really looking for is we're not going to be asking really searching mathematics or science questions or anything like that. We just want to hear a little bit from your child about what they're like as a person um, to tell us about their passions, their hobbies, their interests, so that they can talk about that and feel at ease talking about that. Um, but also we'll then get on to asking a little bit about school, what they enjoy at school, what they find challenging. And really the whole thing is to for them to be able to show us um, that they can join the school and then they can be part of a student body who are collaborative, who get on with each other who are a, and who are keen on learning. They're the key things for us. So um, please, I know you will be children uh, and, and parents as well. Uh, you'll be a little bit uh, stressed about it, but try not to be too stressed. OK, so Sue so Ellen, if, uh, if you could come into the picture now, that would be great. And if I go on to the next slide, perhaps you could yes. talk the, the next process. Good morning, everyone. So my name is Sue Ellen Sanikon. I'm the head of admissions uh, for the French and international stream. So, of course, uh, after listening to all the curriculum part, uh, we thought it was still a good uh, idea to uh, give you more uh, highlights on the next stage uh, of admitting your child in our school. I think most of the participants uh, today have already applied. So the exciting things today with us is that we are opening an, a year seven, as Jan said, we are expanding. So it gives more opportunity and chances for your children to join us. Um, that says as well that in our different stage, usually when you apply, you are going on a waiting list. Um, which have different, of course, um, priority system. However, since we're opening a year seven, uh, we are likely to open any new student that apply to our school to go straight to an assessment. The assessment are taking place right now. Uh, Jan, um, uh, Jan and his team, Mark, Helen, are very busy right now running online assessment. So if you have not received your invitation yet, it should come up in the next few days. Um, the online assessment, of course, as Mark said, ideally we prefer to meet the families in person, but we are adjusting with the situation. And I would say the next stage of the admission are exactly the same. So once your assessment is done, um, the assessment team, so Mark and his team will give us the feedback if they need more supporting documents. Um, I would say that the more you share with us, the best it is, um, especially uh, as Ellen mentioned for the SEND support, if you have any supporting document that we can highlight already to the team ahead of the assessment so it can discuss, it can be discussed during the assessment or even at a later stage. Any part of um, your child education so far uh, is a good information for us to have. Uh, once we the assessments are done, uh, you will receive an answer from uh, the admission team. So I believe most of you have been in touch with Tiffany Ho, our admission manager for the international stream. And we will probably send you either um, an admission offer to join us uh, from year seven uh, of 2022-23 school year. In case um, your assessment is unsuccessful, you will have the option to defer your application to the next year. Indeed, it's not because you have not passed the assessment this year that it would not be an opportunity for another year. That being said, um, what I want you to really uh, keep in mind through the process is that right now, our biggest, um, I would say, intake are either for the very early years, so from nursery or reception year, or either year seven. Because once our students have joined us, they're actually quite very loyal to our school. They're really staying with us until the end. So the only moment you can join us, for example, from year seven or nine or 10 is if we have departures from our current students. And so far we have a very low um, uh, number of departures year on year. So that's why if you want to join us, it's right now from year seven. Um, once the admission offer has been sent, uh, we will ask you for different administrative and supporting document to complete your admission. Um, and then we will pass it on to the faculty team. So basically they will be aware of who is joining from the September onwards. 
And usually, and uh, what has been put in place already last year with Helen is that you will already be in touch with the faculty team from June in order to prepare yourself, have a welcome letter, the key contacts to have. So I would say you will have a much more relaxed summer and have enough time to prepare for, for the, the big first day of school uh, at FIS. So these are the key stage. Um, of course, you know, um, our admission team are available if you have any questions throughout the process. Uh, but I would say it can be quite a really relatively quick process. So if you're wondering, you know, how long do I have to wait to have an answer or how can I be sure I will have a secure place? It would be quite quickly for year seven. So it could be, you know, by March at the earliest, we can already uh, send you and complete all of your admission for your children. That's all for me. Uh, I think we pass on to the next slides, which are mostly, I think, about any additional question you may have. So please feel free to put them in the chat box. Okay, I think at the moment there's, there's one in the chat box here. Uh, good morning, I want to ask if we had, the interview will be online or face-to-face. -face. Uh, we do, as uh, Sue Ellen said, we do prefer face-to-face, -face, but unfortunately, um, really from today, uh, we're not able to do that. So on, uh, on an ongoing basis, it will mainly be, um, it will mainly be online. Um, but, you know, we're hoping to get back to a face-to-face -face as soon as possible. <laughs> So the ne next question to come through, may I know the timetable of the students? Yes, um, so that one in, in a nutshell, when you come into year seven, um, there are 26 hours of study per week. Um, the day starts at half past eight and finishes at the latest at 3.30. And as I said, on a Wednesday, it will be a 1.30 finish to accommodate uh, extracurricular activities. Um, the lessons are, 55 minutes, and then there's five minutes travel time between. So a big difference between primary school and secondary schools is that the students will go to the different classrooms with the teachers and move around the campus a lot more. So that's why we have this um, travel time, I would say. They also have lockers where they can become independent. They can put their things, they don't have to take their things around with them all of the time so that their backs don't suffer, for example. Um, so within that 26 hours, uh, the main things are English, maths, languages, um, social studies, which is history and geography, uh, all have three hours, as do Mandarin uh, or Spanish, whichever one of those that you take. PE also has three hours. Um, and then from there, it's a mix of, of lots of other subjects, drama, music, for example, uh, both have one hour each. And then creative studies, which is a mix of art and computer science. They have, that's a double each week, two hours. And um, there also, there's a major recess break time of 20 minutes in the morning. And then there is a one hour lunch. Uh, we have a rotating lunch between half past 11 and uh, half past one. But for year seven, mainly it's either at half past 11 or half past 12 when their lunch has become available. Um, I think that's for that one. And then another one from, uh, good morning. May I know roughly the turnover rate of teachers? Thank you. Actually, I'll put you over to uh, Mr. Clayton for that one because he's the, the main instrument of the, uh, of the new staff coming in. Mr. Clayton. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, um, <clears throat> good question. And it, and it is often a, a metric used to kind of measure um, how well schools are doing. Our staff turnover traditionally is incredibly low. Um, I would say pre-COVID, our staff turnover was something, in the international stream, something around 5%, which is unbelievably low, given that most international schools' turnover rate is around 20%. Obviously, with the onset of COVID, things have changed a little bit, and that some, some staff um, you know, wish to return to their home countries. But our turnover rates are still um, incredibly low. And in fact, obviously, it's good to have new staff in. It's good to have new, new people coming into the school. And one thing that we kind of uh, pride ourselves on is making sure that we have a really good range of demographic in terms of experience, age, 
obviously um, nationality, diversity, those kinds of things. And as Mark said earlier, we do have some staff who've been here almost from the very start of the international stream, but we also have staff who've been here for a year or are one or two years into their teaching. And to be honest, if they're, if they're good enough, they're old enough. And, you know, we have teachers who are in their 20s who are absolutely fantastic. They, they, they did brilliantly well. We have teachers, let's say, at the more experienced end of the, of the scale. I wouldn't like to call them old, but they're at the more experienced end, uh, who are also loved and, and um, you know, respected by the kids. So we're really proud of our staff. Actually, we're really proud of our staffing. We think that we get it. We think we get it right. We think we attract really good people. And we attract them from all over the world. And just to give you an idea, um, this year, when we've st started to um, advertise our posts, um, we've had something around uh, 400 um, applications, something like that. So it shows that we are an attractive proposition still for international teachers, and uh, obviously we're delighted with that. I just want to come back on one thing, just to, just to add something really, really quickly about the admissions process, about the interview and so on. Um, and I, I'm aiming to save you about $10,000 here. Uh, don't be drawn in by any uh, people or, or, or company that say that they're able to get you into FIS or other international schools in Hong Kong. You often see their advertisements on the side of public, um, public buses, the small green buses. We have no relationship with any of these people. They don't know what we ask. They don't know what we're looking for. We don't have a relationship with any of them. So if any of them say we can, you know, uh, help your son or daughter get into these, to get into FIS, I can't speak for the other schools, but to get into FIS, they don't exist. So um, it could save you quite a lot of money. So just allow the student to be the student. And as Mark said, it, it, it's a chat about their the holistic who are they as people that's what we're really really interested in who are they as people are they going to add something value to our school and that's what's really really important for us academics all those things are important too but are they good people are they people who are going to come into the school take advantage of the opportunities but also add something to the school itself so uh, yeah we look forward to seeing them very very soon Okay, thanks, Ian. Uh, uh, Carmen, thanks for the uh, three three questions in one. So we'll try and uh, answer each one of them. So since face-to-face -face classes are suspended now, that's right, and we're, we've got no real data to when that's going to stop, unfortunately. Uh, can you share the experience of online classes? Yeah, online classes, have, we've, we've um, adapted really well to them. Uh, we don't prefer online classes at all. Um, our students are doing pretty well because there is a good solid structure. So all the way from year seven, we do use technology. Students are expected to bring in a laptop. Uh, that doesn't have to be an Apple Mac, although around about 70% do. Um, it can be any, any uh, laptop. And what we use is the Google suite of uh, Classroom, uh, et cetera, to be able to manage that, manage the lessons. So, with video, et cetera. Um, we've done quite a bit of work as a staff to make sure that everybody has good strict guidelines as how to use that. Uh, we also have a policy which goes out to students and to parents as well as the expectations that we have of how lessons will be conducted on that. So um, we adapted very quickly, particularly after the Hong Kong protests uh, in 2019. Uh, we reviewed what was happening there and so therefore, when in around about March 2020, um, we kicked into the COVID uh, era, we were very much uh, ready for that. Um, and we feel that we've got a good, uh, solid approach to that, which works for most students. But um, for some students, it's really, really difficult online. Um, and so what we do is we have a lot of pastoral support through Sylvia and Helen, who keep in touch with teachers um, through re uh, regular sort of meetings. And then if there are any students who are really struggling with online, we will then get in touch with the parents to see if we can work together uh, to make the experience better, okay? Now, the arrangement of extracurriculum activities, it's very difficult to keep them going, obviously, but I must admit quite a few of our teachers have done so. So for example, uh, debating World Scholars Cup, MUN, they have all gone ahead 
and the maths actually, some of the maths competition, uh, they are still happening uh, online. Um, so they are still going ahead despite the difficulties of that. So um, we basically stick to the same schedule as if we were in school. So it allows the consistency for the students and for the staff to know where they should be. And then a lot of our staff are very good and very flexible around that in finding times where the students are available and they're available to keep these clubs going. So we, we have managed in very difficult circumstances. And then the integration program for newly joined students. Again, um, Helen and Sylvia have done really well with that. Um, we've, we do um, have students join us at different times during the year. So if, um, uh, and Sue Ellen manages this process with, with Tiffany as well in admissions. If there is a space comes up, then we will offer it to the next uh, family on the waiting list if they can join us. So we've recently, uh, as Helen said, had our year nine joiners uh, in January. Um, tomorrow, actually, we've got a year 10 starting with us as well. So we manage that online, but a lot of the things that we do, even face to face, we also continue to do online. So one of the best things is the, uh, the buddy system. So we'll get uh, the new student being linked up as quickly as possible uh, with a current student, somebody who after we've obviously done the interview, we feel may have similar interests. And that's one of the other benefits of doing the interview um, with new students so that we get to know them a little bit more and who they could possibly get on pretty well with who is currently studying in our school. So that process is still there. And as I said, we will, once places come about, become available, we will go straight to the waiting list to have students join us as soon as they can. So thanks, Carmen, for that. I hope that um, answers your question. So are there, are there any more questions that anybody would like to ask? As Ian said, anything uh, is fine. We would rather you ask the question than, than go away and not know. Okay, Susanna, I don't know if you want to finish off there, please. I don't think Susanna is available, but it's okay. okay. It's okay. We can just uh, well thank you all again, you know, for participating and being here with us today. We hope we answered some question you had and again please feel free to reach out to admission team if there are some um, that may come later as well because <laughs> it was a lot of information today um, and again thank you again uh, for participating and we really hope uh, we welcome your child very soon with us and if your assessment is in the coming days well good luck uh, and I'm sure you'll be fine and uh, Mark and his team is looking forward, are looking forward to meet you. <laughs> thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Solon. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye.